Well, thank you very much. This is the most uh, seamless transition I've ever had from a panel to an a individual keynote, so thank you for that. Are my slides working? Yeah. Okay, how do I get to the next one? Ah, okay. Excellent. So, good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for uh, being willing to listen to about uh, 20 more minutes of my voice. So I hope your neurons are buzzing uh, as a result of that panel discussion, just like this animation on my slide, as mine certainly are. Uh, the focus of my talk, as just mentioned, is AI in reg tech, and more critically, how humans and machines combined are transforming compliance as we know it today. So to bring out the human in me, I'd actually like to start with a song. Now, the lyrics are original. Uh, the melody is inspired by the police. So, here goes nothing. Every risk you take and every reg you break from the SEC to the BOE, reg tech can help reduce. Oh, can't you see? The complexity, the volume and pace of regulatory change. Every risk you take and every rule you break, there's too much at stake for the market's sake. AI is here for you. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> So I trust I, uh, I haven't ruined the police for everyone, yeah? Sting isn't in the audience, excellent. All right, so on a slightly more serious note, so as we discussed in the panel, you know, ever since the 08 uh, financial crash, you know, the volume, velocity, and complexity of reg change have absolutely exploded. So, on my next slide, here is a more concrete and non-musical, if I can play the, the animation there, Yes, a more concrete and non-musical taste of the volume and velocity of reg change just in the past uh, seven months uh, of this year. And to keep things super simple, super relevant, it's just a selection of the UK issuing bodies, including, of course, uh, the FCA, the BOE. And so you can see uh, from that that uh, dozen, there's dozens of updates per day adding up to hundreds upon thousands uh, per year. This is just from the UK alone. Now, again, most of you in this room operate uh, in multiple countries around the globe. And so Ruth uh, Vandhofer has said it far better than I could, right? She said that tech and regulation must go hand in hand. It is no longer possible to have humans alone manage regulatory change. It is truly a Sisyphean task, yeah? And it's gotten even more Sisyphean. So again, referencing our discussion just now, we've got things like Brexit, COVID, uh, environmental issues happening that have made reg change even more complex, completely unprecedented global events like this. And it will only get worse, right? So we've got you know, rapidly evolving technologies, um, IoT, crypto, blockchain, who knows what's next. We, we need to have the regulatory frameworks shift to address the risks being brought up by these new technologies. So with all of this context in mind, let's now talk about how AI is being used in reg tech right now, right this moment. But first, um, I love Voltaire. You know, Voltaire famously said, if you wish to converse with me, define your terms up front. So I shall do that, Voltaire. But let's start with RegTech, right? So RegTech, simply put, is the use of technology to help regulated firms uh, identify, understand, and also meet their regulatory obligations. And the tech in RegTech is increasingly being driven by AI which actually has academic origins back in the 1950s. Now, back then, compute wasn't so great. It wasn't so popular. And the popularity grew with the intro of machine learning in the 1980s, but it's absolutely exploded in the 2010s uh, because of deep learning. 
And at a very, very high level, so what is AI? Well, AI, artificial intelligence, is intelligence demonstrated by machines versus the more natural intelligence from you and I, human beings. And the key thing is that machines are, are still trained by and learn from humans, right? So we can't easily separate the two. It isn't a, a, a dichotomy. And so let's take a more visual look at AI to illustrate this. This is a really, really high level, you know, 10,000 foot view of the core components of an AI system. So you have data uh, feeding into training these models, these algorithms, and they produce results. And that could be a classification, uh, translation of prediction, uh, et cetera. And so the quality of results is conditioned by the first two components, right? So the data used to train the models and the sophistication and relevance of the models themselves to that data and to your use case. And the key thing to bear in mind is that every single component of this three-tiered system involves human intervention. So data. You know, we decide what data to include, what to exclude, uh, how to clean them, uh, how to label them, et cetera, et cetera. Models, we decide which techniques, which algorithms to use. You know, how do we tune them? What are the hyperparameters? And very importantly, the results, right? There is no objectively speaking good model. It's all, you know, how good is it? Is it good enough? And that requires human interpretation, interpretation of what good enough actually is for your business use case. And also, edge cases. We need humans for that, right? And critically, as, as new data comes in, humans again model how is the model responding to this new data? Does it need to be adjusted? Is it drifting off, right? And there's more. This is just sort of internal humans uh, on the side of the companies using AI. We also have user in the loop. So in the software, those interacting with the software, like those of you in this room, including myself, of course, our interactions, explicit and implicit with the results of the models, will also add data to further improve them. So here is the key message I'd love for you to keep in mind for the best of this talk. We can't take the human out of AI, right? AI, it's basically a structured version of human intelligence at scale, human judgment, human curation, uh, human design. Okay, definitions done. So let's move on to the key use cases of AI in RegTech as it currently stands today. So it's everything from ensuring that customers are treated fairly uh, to making complex calculations for things like uh, capital adequacy. There's been a recent study done of over 1,200, can you believe it, 1,200 different reg tech firms. And they fall into about 11 major categories. I'll just go through very, very quickly just several of these categories. Uh, the first one, of course, is regulatory and compliance management. So Cube fits in here. This is sort of mouth of the river, to use that metaphor, beginning of the cycle, yeah? So you have to understand like what regulations are applicable and what rules they contain uh, to be able to even go further downstream. And so there you've got machine learning, machine, ah, machine learning, uh, natural language processing, uh, structuring, collecting this text, being able to intelli intelligently get the rules out of them. This is all you know, vast volumes of, of the most complex text data imaginable need to convert that into numbers, into vectors. And further downstream, there's a couple of key uh, reg tech uh, verticals here that I think are relevant to people in this room. Thin crime, so obviously using AI to process vast, vast volumes of data to detect fraud, uh, anti-money laundering, right? And of course, cybersecurity risks, privacy. Uh, I think these are two very, very, very key kind of more downstream uh, reg tech verticals that are very, very um, uh, prescient today. And of course, uh, risk analytics is another huge aspect of this. So these are very complex calculations. So again, the modeling helps out here. Simulations, right? Uh, purposes like pricing, like stress testing, uh, capital allocation. So on a high level, we've got an extremely, extremely broad range of data types, of machine learning and deep learning techniques, and use cases for AI in reg tech today. We're looking at words, we're looking at numbers, behavioral data, uh, images, multimodal documents with tables and images, you name it, right? And to bring everything back together at a high level, 
Uh, think of AI and reg tech as having the following objective, the main objective. It is to help you, people in this room, you, you are the compliance, legal, uh, risk experts. It's to help you focus on what you do best. And what is that? Critical thinking, creativity, culture, as we've kept saying this morning, problem solving, examining edge cases and nuance, right? So for example, you know, which internal policies have to change and how in response to a sudden change in regulation? That's human. Now, tasks that can be repeated, um, these can and should be outsourced, as it were, to the machine. So, for example, you know, checking hundreds of websites per day for regulatory updates, uh, copying and pasting them into Excel, which is pretty much like a stone tablet these days, um, and extracting rules, like reading them line by line to get the rules out. I mean, these are largely repetitive tasks. And so human capital and talent are far, far, far too valuable to be invested in these low-level repetitive tasks. Let's use AI to move humans up the value chain, yeah? All right, I'll end with a very kind of simple analogy, the section about AI and medtech today, and that is STP, straight through processing. Now, you're, you're all very familiar with this, I, I'm sure. And it's revolutionized uh, the accounting function in finance, payments and trades being processed you know, in, in seconds, uh, automatically, end to end, uh, and extremely low error rates and, you know, versus traditional approaches involving, of course, front and back office, phone, fax, email. Now, in a similar way, this is the analogy, in a similar way, AI-powered reg techs are revolutionizing how compliance, legal, cybersecurity functions um, are, are behaving in, in financial services organizations. So, you know, responses to reg change are being facilitated through AI and reg tech end to end, ideally, without too much manual intervention. It's like the straight through processing of regs, so to speak. So um, please, everyone, just close your eyes for a second and, and imagine this, right? Imagine you're, you're horizon scanning for relevant, applicable regs. You are extracting rules from them. Um, the risk assessment of the rules is happening as well, and, and the rules are being mapped, of course, onto internal policies and controls and frameworks. Uh, pretty much, you're watching this all happen. It's, it's happening, you know, on the software itself, and there's no need for multiple email threads or updating of multiple uh, spreadsheets. It'll be out of date next week, and you are brought in to look at the exceptions, the edge cases only. This is the driverless car of compliance, effectively, right? And I don't have to spell out the benefits. I think Elon has done most of the evangelizing for us all on that, on that topic. So, okay, we've now taken a look at the key use cases of AI in RegTech today. And this is, of course, the far, 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 far future, just to give you that. This is the, obviously it's not happening in the next few years. Um, and so I think this is a nice segue into where is AI in reg tech going in the next couple of years? So what are the tech advances that have happened recently and what do they mean for you and your business, right? So for this, I will focus on this mouth of the river uh, reg tech um, vertical, which as I mentioned is regulatory uh, management as opposed to a domain vertical because you have to know what, you know, the golden source of truth before you can even go downstream. So a couple of visuals here. So up until now, up until for the past 10 years or so, machine learning and natural language processing techniques have been used, I would say, for machine reading, broadly speaking. So what is machine reading? Collecting, organizing, structuring, getting metadata, uh, translating regulatory text at scale almost real time. Yeah, this is really difficult stuff right? And also beginning to extract obligations and rules uh, from this text, organizing those rules. But very, very soon in the next couple of years, I think that machine reading of regulation text is going to evolve into something closer to machine understanding. So reg texts are going to not only know that certain regulations are about certain topics, right, like climate change uh, derivatives, but also how are these topics evolving across time and space? And, and, and also 
you know, regulations and the rules they contain are going to be related and connected to each other in a way that transcends this explicit in-text reference. And red text will begin to also understand, you know, which regulations receive the most attention from the regulated entities and also the regulators. And all of this, all of this is going to enable predictions to be made about regulatory change in certain domains, in certain contexts. So imagine not only being able to stay on top of reg change, but also anticipating future reg change and regulation before it actually arrives. I mean, this is proactivity at its finest, is it not? So, what has led me to be so confident in that assertion, right? So, so what are the key factors that have led us to this inflection point in RegTech AI? I argue there are three key factors. First, data availability and quality, mentioned in the panel multiple times. You know, over the past uh, decade or so, native e-versions of many regulations have been produced and enriched, of course, by the regulators, legislators themselves. And that's allowed for better machine reading um, of, this, of this text uh, and, again, structuring it at scale. Second factor, of course, is the market readiness, which is, I think, a lot of you in this room determined that, um, and subsequent product maturity in response to that. So in recent years, I think in the past five years, the hesitancy around AI-based solutions for regulatory management have actually evolved into a pretty strong appetite for more intelligent reg tech tools. And that appetite is reflected in the maturity of the software into these you know, multifunctional, highly customizable, and API-connected platforms. The third factor, save the best for last, is the tech itself, the AI itself. And that, I would say, that the subcategory of AI that's relevant here is semantic AI. The stage for this has been set, right? You've got data, vast volumes of structured, regulatory, and also critically user data, so the comments, annotations from the software, intersecting, of course, in these user-in-the-loop systems, as mentioned above, Okay, and so Semantic AI loves this. It's a very rich data set, and it will leverage this. But critically, there have been advances in the modeling computer science side of things as well. And in particular, uh, you might have heard of this. So it's, it's not just deep learning. It's like transformer-based language models. That's the kind of the, the buzzword, as it were, uh, in, in the computer science side of things. So to illustrate this, this revolution, this transformation um, of the modeling. Let's just have a look at another analogy, which is images versus tech. So over a decade ago, there was a bit of a breakthrough in computer vision. So what is this is the, the subset of AI that allows computers to see like human beings. And so that breakthrough was driven by ImageNet on the left here. Massive database, over 14 million images that were hand annotated to indicate the objects they contained over 20,000 categories. I mean, this is immense. Um, we're now reaching the regulatory equivalent of ImageNet, right? This is the collision of these large scale, again, transformer based deep learning language models with well defined data sets of regulatory text enriched by human annotations. And this text is far more structured, more cohesive than most freeform text on the web. Cough, you know, Reddit, uh, Facebook, Twitter, cough. So achieving, you know, some form of semantic understanding is actually entirely feasible here. And so these large-scale, again, transformer-based deep learning models were introduced about four years ago, 2017. They are at the forefront of advances in AI today. They're all named after Muppets, like Bert, Big Bird, etc. Okay, and the key thing is for you, for you and me, they understand context to a level never seen before. They understand context. They know that a key term in one document is equivalent to a key term in a completely different document, different era, different different uh, producer, even if the documents aren't, you know, you know, they don't seem to be similar, and the words don't seem to be synonyms. So here's an example. 
So Memorandum of Association on the left in the UK Companies Act 1998 is semantically, equ semantically equivalent to uh, Articles of Incorporation in Chapter 16 of the Wyoming Business Corporation Act Article 1. This, the machine knows this. And how does it know this? So it's the syntax, it's the surrounding words, uh, it's the metadata of the documents, and of course, human annotations, right? So again, it's behaving increasingly like a human brain. We have gone way, 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 way beyond just keyword matching. So what are the implications of all of this for everyone in this room? Now, as machines begin to reach this critical mass of regulatory knowledge learned from us, yeah, we are going to start learning from machines in the next couple of years. So, you know, we as legal risk compliance experts, we're going to rely more and more on machines to inform, but never replace, never replace our understanding of regulation. And there's more. You know, you're fully on top of the regulations because of, of course, your, your, friend, your friend the machine. And this allows you to actually begin to influence and collaborate with uh, the regulations themselves. So again, RegTex being in the central kind of position here, you know, we can facilitate feedback loops between um, regulated entities and the regulators and allow you to show the regulators, for example, the rules that are created might not actually work the way they intend to work. They might have X, Y, Z unexpected impacts on your business. And that, again, helps regulators uh, build you know, better, clearer, more structured, machine readable as well, and consistent uh, regulations and push us towards that global standard that Angus mentioned. On a related note, it's collaboration amongst people in this room. So reg text and enable that, peer learning, knowledge sharing, right? So, you know, there are many models in machine learning that help flag similar users, similar companies to each other. So let's use that and, and help, you know, banks learn from banks facing similar compliance frustrations and challenges. We're all in this together. So it's not just this driverless car of compliance that RegTech AI enables. I think it's a global paradigm, a mindset shift in how regulation even operates. So we're reaching this critical inflection point in RegTech AI. And let's now go back to the very beginning, the title of this talk. So I hope you can see that humans and machines, I made that, <laughs> humans and machines together can harness their intelligence to transform the way that we do compliance. You know, even the way we think about what compliance means and, and the way that we regulate, just imagine, imagine the possibilities. So let's return to the police. Uh, let's end with some humanity, but with a collective voice this time. Every risk we take and every rule we break to prevent headache and avoid mistake, we have to use AI. All right, I'm done. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for being here today. I might have time for a quick question. I don't know if that's possible, but thank you. No? OK. All right, thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll be at the event, so I'll see you at the um, networking. Thank you.